we heard that there's a small time jump, like a day or two. No. No, no time jump at all for two days. No. Minutes. Minutes, just seconds. So, you know. I think. I mean, I guess you could interpret it as no, it's no time at all. It's just minutes out. So again, we're going to come up to the white room. We're going to see the face in the window. We're going to go. Did you see? We the, did not. No, didn't. we did not. Uh, well, so unfortunately, we're not even going to release that <laughs> on the line because it's not done yet. It was uh, there's, there's effect shots that hadn't been put in yet. Sound design was like done in Avid in post. It wasn't done like the way it's supposed to be. Done. So we're going to release the uh, highlight reel, which is cool, but it's stuff you've seen before. So what you see in that teaser is. Clark is in the room, she's noticing that her father's watch is missing, she's still wondering where the hell this is, she's looking at that picture on the wall, she looks out the door and she sees a person in a hazmat suit walk by which freaks her out, and then she notices that Monty's room is empty and she takes something, breaks, she like flips out, breaks the camera, breaks the glass, reaches through, opens the door, rips her arm open so she's like dripping blood everywhere, it's gross. And then uh, she grabs a shard of glass and takes the person in the hazmat suit, rips the helmet off. So we see this character who becomes a big character for us, um, who I've never mentioned her name before. So this is a scoop for you. Her name is Maya. Maya. Uh, Spelled M-A-Y-A. M-A-Y-A. And who's playing her? Uh, this girl named Eve Harlow, who's playing her, who's excellent, really very strong actor. Um, and she takes her hostage and says, take me to my friends now or I'm going to cut your throat. And we really get to see what a badass Clark has become, a warrior, you know, she's hard in so many ways. And overwhelms this girl, like, this girl is like a shivering puddle of goo. And finally they get to the place where this girl, Eve, is taking her, Maya is taking her, and um, we cut. On the, I didn't show the, in the clip what she's looking at when she says holy shit, but it's a big holy shit. And that's where we begin to realize what hot weather is, and, you know, the story takes off from there. Sorry, who did you say Maya was played by? Her name's Eve, E-V-E -E Harlow. Okay, Eve Harlow. Um, Isaiah Washington is here. Yes, he is. What can you say about that? It's uh, you great know. that he's supporting the show that he's not in anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that. Generous man. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, that's a story that, it was a tough story because he, to keep going, because the character had fulfilled his destiny and delivered his people to the ground. And, you know, he's like Moses not getting to go into the promised land himself. That was kind of a, a beautiful sort of poetic ending for him, I thought. Um, but then I thought about it some more, and I, first of all, he's so good, and, and the character is so strong, and um, we came up with a very, I think, cool way to keep that story going. <laughs> and we will, it plays out pretty quickly. Isaiah's sending me emails from the set saying, they ain't ready, they ain't ready, because it's so intense. They ain't ready, he says. I'm like, okay, I hope they're not ready. So what's going on with um, Lincoln and Octavia? I mean, we last saw them, they were one was injured and they were kind of getting away. Where does their journey pick up? Yeah, Lincoln's taking her somewhere to be safe, hopefully. Uh, but the And she's been pretty badly wounded. And that wound uh, is going to make it hard for them to make it all the way where they're headed for uh, when the show starts. When the episode starts. Um, you know, Lincoln is now a series regular. Uh, Ricky is a series regular. And, and I love that character too. And he is, he's our, he's our entree into the grounded world. And we really begin to unpack that and understand how that world works and that they're not bad guys, you know, all of them certainly. Um, and uh, Octavia is becoming more and more like a ground. She's, that's what we started to do with her in, at the end of last year, and this year picks up right in that spot. She's, she does some pretty crazy things in the first couple episodes. So she's just becoming that full-on warrior woman like Clark is. Yeah, in, in different ways, but absolutely, for sure. I mean, that's what I like about the women in the show, for sure, but, but the characters in general is like the world has affected them. They're different, but not the same. You know, on the most physical level, I, cut, I don't know if you guys saw the pictures, but I put out some pictures which were like, before and after shots of like the way that they looked in the pilot and the way that they looked in the 13. Because I want people to see that this is not a show of, it's not like a they're pretty people show. It's they're good looking, but this is a show where like 
violence is real, it has real ramifications, and the world is changing them, and they look different, right? It's right from everything from the way they look to, the, to their personalities are being changed by this sort of crucible that they've been in. Um, and so that was kind of something I really bugged the, the studio to put out, just to, you know, we take it very seriously, and we want people to realize that that's what we're doing. What can you tease about the premiere, specifically? More than the thing I just did. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, just to, that's really going to hook people who may have not, you know, um, um, become obsessed with the show like we have. <laughs> I, you know, I feel like, this, first of all, I think the weakest, just at a total critical level, the weakest episodes last year were the pilot, which I wrote and created and, and admitted that as much so I can say that. Uh, and episode two, which I wrote and, you know, was responsible for. But we slowly turned the ship into what the show became, roughly around episode four, I think. End of three when Wells died, into four with the hanging, and then five with the culling. And then it really didn't stop. And so, you know, that's where we are now. That's where we're living now. So the first two episodes of this season, which are the only two that are shot, the third is written, the fourth is being written. Pick, pick right up where 13 left off. So it's really a very intense, dark, edgy, awesome world that was, you know, to me, the first three episodes of this season are miles better than the first three episodes of last season, which is awesome. But as, you know, just to know that we have a head start already created. Now, who knows? We might fuck it all up and it will, you know, jump the shark. I don't know, but I don't think so. I feel pretty good about it right now. So season two has 16 episodes. Yes. Uh, how have you guys mapped out the whole season? Yeah, I mean, we. I know what the season is about. The, the fun of being with a bunch of writers and writers on is that I come in with a plan, like I did last year, and then a bunch of minds take over, and, and you know, together, hopefully, you get to something better. And we did that last year. And so far, we're doing that this year. So yes, I've had a plan going in, but you know, they say like uh, every battle plan, you can throw it out when the first gunshot goes off. It's like it's already changing and getting better and deepening the ways that I didn't anticipate going in. Um, that said, there's like big signposts that I know are happening that that are unchangeable and unmovable, and we're writing towards those. How soon into the new season will we know the fates of Bellamy and Paul? Uh, pretty quickly. Pretty we'll quickly. understand who's alive and who's not, who, where they are. Pretty quickly. What about, um, of course, Murphy? He's the ghost out there, of course. He comes back to haunt everybody. Murphy's like a cockroach. Yeah. She'll never die. Everybody's um, like The thing about Murphy is, one of the things I feel is that last year we kind of, I don't want to say we underserved him as writers, but he was a little bit one-dimensional. He was just a asshole, and so one of the goals that I set out for myself in episode one was to add some level of understanding for him, and so I think by the end of the episode, we're going to, we don't like him, you'll never trust him, but you'll understand. Great, thank you.